Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Joe. Hi. Are you cold? Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday after Ash Wednesday, February 15, and we are still taking milk around here. Okay. So let's settle. Let's settle. We'll read the gospel already. Okay. Today the gospel comes from St. Luke chapter 9 verses 22 to 25. So this is the day, the day after Ash Wednesday. Okay? The day after Ash Wednesday. So we are now embarking on the uh, the days of Lent and the gospels from here on will be talking a lot about um Things related to sacrifice and sin and those kinds of themes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, today, Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. On the third day, be raised. Then he said to all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit himself okay that's the gospel and in this very short gospel today we have uh like the um, we have a very short brief but very compact description of what the whole lent is all about really okay the first part of this gospel reminds us about the salvific mission of Jesus Christ. Right? That he came to earth, the son of man came to earth to suffer, to die, to be rejected by the people that he came for, the people he came to serve, the people he came to die for, to, to, to save. Right? He will be rejected by those very people. By the elders, the chief priests, the leaders of the Jews. And that he's going to be killed. And that is the way he was going to save us. And on the third day, give us the hope. The hope that after all, everything is said and done, there will be a resurrection. That he himself will resurrect from the dead. And that is where... Our whole faith is anchored on the hope of the resurrection. The hope that after, after uh, the curse of sin that pervades our lives, there will be a resurrection. There will be that eternal happiness and glory forever in heaven. That is why the most important feast in the church is... Easter, right? It's not Christmas, although we tend to celebrate Christmas more, right? But Easter is the most important feast of the church because Easter is actually the fulfillment, the embodiment of the entire faith that we live in, in, in our Catholic faith. Easter is the biggest hope that we have. Okay? That we are one day going to resurrect with Christ and live with Him forever in heaven. Okay, so that, that's what the first paragraph of this gospel is all about. Then the second paragraph comes around. See? If we want to share in that resurrection of Jesus Christ, in that hope that we will resurrect with Jesus Christ, then we have to follow Him. Okay? He says, if anyone wishes to come after me, if anyone wishes to follow me, well, he has to follow me in my death also. He has to follow me also in how I gave up my life 
for the sake of others. He has to also follow me. You have to follow me in the way that I died. But he's not talking about a physical death for us, really, in the sense that, you know, we have to be crucified also. But we have to die. What he's talking about here is we have to die to sin. We have to kill sin. We have to kill the tendency of sin in, in ourselves. And the way to do that is to deny, to deny ourselves. What does it mean to deny? What does denying mean? To refuse, eh? to refuse right? To refuse. Or to say no. <laughs> to say no. Okay? To say no to what or to who or to, to, to what? What is it to say no to? Our Lord says here, right? Say no to yourself, right? Deny himself. Uh, let's think about this. What do we have to deny ourselves about? What is it that we say no to? Huh? In general, it will mean, well, saying no to our evil inclinations. Saying no to the things that will lead us to sin. Okay? Saying no... Uh, to the good things, in fact. To the good things that we like so much. Eh? Saying no to pleasurable things that we like so much. You see, we, we all have the tendency to always want what is good, what is comfortable, what is nice, what is likable, what's comfortable, what is uh, beautiful. Right? We all like those things. And you know why we like those things? You know why we like all of those good things? Because they are what we spend. Huh? They, you, they are what you spend on. Because they are all good to begin with, right? And all of that goodness is actually a reflection of the goodness of God. Right? The goodness of God. But, but, here's the catch. Overindulgence in those good things can sometimes lead, lead, to bad things, especially if we abuse them, especially if we don't use them for their proper ends, especially if we desire them not for the good, uh, the good reasons that they were created for. So in other words, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Right? And sometimes the disordered desire for these good things can sometimes lead us to sin if we crave for them and desire them in a disorderly way. That is why denying ourselves of those legitimate good things and pleasurable things can be good for our souls. They can be good for our souls. Why? Because they temper our desires. They help us control those desires so that we can make sure that we are only liking them for their good purposes for their good ends which is in the end to to serve god right in the end what is good about the good things is that they lead us to god but if those good same good things will lead us to evil then it becomes bad okay a good example for example well, we're here having breakfast so Food is good. Food is good for our bodies, right? It nourishes our bodies. But if we overindulge in eating, okay, if we take more than what might be good for our bodies, well, guess what? It becomes a bad thing. And it becomes a bad thing both ways. It becomes bad for our bodies because we can be obese. Or... It is also bad for our souls because we end up being gluttons and gluttony is a sin. Right? Gluttony is a sin. So there are many of those legitimate good things. But if we overindulge in them, if we like them just for the pleasure that they bring and not because of the real good that they bring, then that becomes sinful. That becomes sinful. And so our Lord is teaching us in today's gospel 
to learn to deny ourselves, to learn to say no voluntarily. This is a voluntary effort to say no to those good things once in a while. Okay? Once in a while. We don't have to do it all the time. Once in a while, it's good to deny ourselves because that is the way we actually train ourselves to say no, to say no to what and to who? Sin. To say no to sin, to say no to Satan, to say no to temptations. Because you know what? Satan uses those good things to lead us to sin. See, Satan is very clever. He uses the, the things that are good. He uses the things that are good to tempt us to the edge, to bring us to the very edge uh, of uh, and verge of temptation and then fall into sin. He wants to push us to the edge and commit sin. He did the same thing to Jesus. He tempted Jesus, right? When he was in the desert. And, and <laughs> look at the temptation that, that he presented to Jesus. He, oh, he said, you're hungry, you're fasting. Look, why don't you convert those stones into bread? See? Why? Because bread is good. See, food is good for the body. So Satan is clever. He uses those good things to push people to temptation and indulge in the unlawful, illegitimate pleasures that good things would otherwise bring to us. And then what happens? Well, we end up committing sin. Okay? We end up committing sin. So in this Lenten season, we can have this exercise. We can exercise our souls in the same way we exercise our bodies. Right? We, we do some repetitious patterns right? in order to exercise our muscles. Well, we can also do some repetitious exercises of denying ourselves of many of the legitimately good things that we have in order to exercise our soul in saying no to sin and saying no to Satan. Okay? So that's a good practice this Lent. Okay? Oh, we like food. Mommy cooks nice uh, food, soup, whatever it is. Maybe we can take a little less of that food that we like so much and you know, substitute it. Take a little bit more about that item that we don't like so much. Right? So, um, we don't like vegetables too much. Well, maybe we can take more of the vegetables and take less of the other thing. We say no to the, to the ribs or the steak or something and take more of the vegetables. Oh, uh, what else uh, besides food? Um, oh, we like our rest. We like our comfort. It's cold nowadays. It's cold. Okay, well, maybe we can remove that layer of sweater and, 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 and bear the cold a little bit more and say no to the comfort of warmth. See? <laughs> See? That is another way. See, there are many things you can do saying no to the comforts and to the things you like and to the things that uh, you, you uh, the pleasurable things you like in this world. Eh? There's so many of those things and you can just think about them every day. Oh, uh, it's easier to, um, you know, just laze around and uh, take it easy and not study very well. well. You can say no to those pleasures as well, right? Or you, you want to be sitting in the most comfortable chair in the house, right? In order to relax, well, you can say no to that. And say, okay, I'll say no to this comfort and I will sit in the most uncomfortable chair today in order to offer up that mortification. Mortification, that's a word I've been looking for. See, that's the word we use uh, for sacrifice, to mortify oneself, to say no to oneself. That's a mortification. You call that mortification, right? Or, um, I don't know, you can think of so many things. That, uh, that you like or you prefer or you want to indulge in, you can say no to those things in order to train yourselves to say no to Satan and no to sin. And that way, you will not be full of yourself. right? You will empty yourself of those uh, things that you like so much and you can fill it up with God, especially in this time of Lent. So let's do this uh, spiritual exercise of mortification. Very often, 
this land. Every day, there'll be so many things that you can actually do to mortify yourselves. And that way, you would have lived Lent in a very, very nice way and prepare very well for Holy Week, prepare to commemorate uh, that time when our Lord suffered and died on the cross, and then, and then be happy. We'll be very happy to celebrate Easter with Jesus when he resurrected from the dead. Okay, folks, that's it for us. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Happy mortifying. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.